As we continue on in our time of worship, we come to the point in time where we, we look at our scripture, we look at our word for today. It's going to be on the screen behind me. It's also going to be in the worship folder that you have. And, and one of the things that we do is to, to read our word together. So will you join me in reading the scripture from the Gospel of Luke? As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along them. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. We bow with me for a moment of prayer. Gracious God, this is your word that we've seen. This is your word that we've read. This is the truth that, that we have this morning. And, and Father, we ask that it begin to work within our hearts. We ask that it begin to, to help us grow closer to you, to strengthen our relationship, to see what it is that you are doing in our hearts and in the hearts of those around us. So, Lord, this morning, open our minds, open our ears, open our hearts, and open our souls that we may hear, that we may see, that we may feel, that we may uh, trust all that you share with us. In your holy name, amen. Ever had a friend that you lost contact with? I was going to bring my high school yearbook, but I forgot it because that's just what I do at times. And, and, and I don't know about you, but in the high school yearbook, you have all those names that people sign it and, and they share with you, like, don't change and all those things. And, and, and you, you think about that for a moment and it gets a little bit hard not to change. But at the same time, you, you, they say, stay in touch forever, right? Best friends forever, BFFs. Um, all those things. How many of those do you, people do you still talk with? A lot? Many? Few? Some of, I know some of the, uh, uh, when I was in Youngsville, one of the big things was alumni weekend. And, and sometimes, uh, and in particular classes that graduated together, they would eat, uh, once a month, they would gather together for breakfast at a local restaurant. Uh, I shouldn't say breakfast, I should say brunch, because it was a little later in the morning. But uh, they gathered together just to share, just to catch up, just to, to see what was going on. But it's the same thing they've done for more, year, more, older, more years than I've been alive. I'll put it that way. They just like to get together. They, they were connecting. And, and over the years, you know, sometimes those connections fail, right? People move. Yeah, you get busy with life. Kids get involved, uh, time begins to get, goes by rather quickly. And in some instances, even death takes us away from our friends, that, that creates that disconnect. Well, as we looking at the resurrection, looking at what that means for us today, we, we come to a point in time where Jesus, is, Jesus has died. He's no longer on the earth. Well, he's no longer there anyways, uh, that they could see. And, and the Mary, we, we, one of the, the stories, gospel stories we have is John 20, eight, um, yeah, 11 through 18, or 9 through 18, which we've looked at before. But in that, we have Mary who's coming to the tomb, and as she's at that tomb, she's looking around and she sees no body. But, but before she gets to that point, she's trying to figure out what she's going to do. Because the, the friend that she had, the friend who walked with her, the friend that was with her, the friend that, that would comfort her, is no longer around. He died. A cruel death, but he died. And part of that loss for her is, who am I going to talk with? Who am I going to share? Who's going to give me the encouragement that I need? This same man, as we look at the Gospel of Luke, Luke what we've read about today, and we're going to look, look a little bit further on in this Luke passage in, in the upcoming weeks, but, but we have two men walking down the road. 
And they're talking amongst themselves and they're wondering, you know, Jesus was supposed to be this, the Messiah. He was supposed to change everything. And they're saddened because they're, that he's no longer here. He died. They, they have no idea what has happened to him. They just know that he's dead. And as they're walking down the road, all of a sudden a, a third person joins them. They've been figured, they've been deep in their conversation, so they have no idea what's going on around them. But, but, but they, this third person shows up. And he says, what's going on? What is happening? And the two friends to the two disciples there are talking. They're like, where have you been? This has been the national news. This has been the local news. This has been the entire world news. That this man, Jesus, who, who was promising the world, who said he was the son of God, who, who said he was all these things, and he was our friend, died, was killed. And Jesus says, man, you guys don't understand anything, do you? He started going through the prophets, Moses, the law. He started going through the Psalms. He started going through the Old Testament. Everything there was to explain to them what it was, what it meant, what Jesus had to do in dying. Well, the thing of it is, the, the, as Jesus is sharing these things, the, these two men have no idea who they're talking to. As, as we look at John 20, once again, we have Mary who, who, who's coming to the tomb and looking and, and seeing nothing and, and all of a sudden hearing a voice behind her, who are you looking for? As she turns, she thinks it's the gardener. Where have you laid him? Just tell me. So this person that they've known and they've heard, that they've seen, that they've loved is, is standing right before them, but they, can't, they don't make the connection. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't make the connection. They don't see this person as, as Jesus. Because in their mind, he's dead. He's gone. All their hopes and all their dreams that they had for him, all the promises that they thought he would bring are dashed. And they're wondering how, uh, they just don't know. And then Jesus makes himself known to them. With Mary, he just says his, her name. He says, Mary. And she runs and she clings at his feet and she holds on to him. She's not letting him go. She, she wants to, to keep a hold of him because she doesn't want to lose him once again. She wants that encouragement and she wants these things. But Jesus says, Mary, you need to get up. You need to go and tell my disciples. You need to go tell my friends that I am alive. And Mary goes. With the two men on this walk on Emmaus, on this, this journey to outside of Jerusalem, as, as they, Jesus is, is sharing with them, they're, they're just, they don't know what to do. Part of their mind is thinking, how does he know so much? How does this person understand what we're going through and understand what is, what is happening to us? And then they gather together at a meal. And as Jesus prays and breaks the bread, they realize who it is. They realize their connection. They realize that this is the one that they've been looking for. This is the friend that they've known. This is the friend that they've had. And they're, they're like, how dumb could we be? How could we? He said everything to us. We know that that's what it was. How did that, our hearts were quickened? We, we should have known. That connection was made again. The one, the man who they thought was dead, wasn't dead. He had rose from the dead. He was resurrected. He was alive. And he was talking with them. He was sharing with them. He was someone that they could grab a hold of. He was someone that they could speak with. He was someone that they could share with. He was someone that was standing right before them. He was alive. 
And he was explaining to them what was going on. He was explaining to them who he was. He was explaining to them that what he had said had not gone away. It was now being fulfilled. He was saying to them that the love that he had for them hasn't diminished. It has increased. Because now he could be with them throughout their entire life. There was no more death that was going to hinder them. There was no more reason for them to walk away from each other. There was no way to be disconnected. Because Jesus was there with them and would be there with them for the rest of their life. What does the resurrection mean for us today? We are like Mary. We are like the two disciples on the Emmaus Road. There was a time where we had a connection with Jesus. There was a time where we had a connection with God. Uh, I, I believe with John Wesley that God's grace has always been there for us, that God's grace has, never, has always been since the day we were conceived, that it's been there waiting for us. God's love has never left us nor forsake us. It's been always there. And God's waiting for us to turn back to him. God's waiting for us to make that connection, that reconnection. And, and as we begin to make that journey and we say, yes, Jesus, I, I want you to be my Lord, my Savior, my God, my friend, my Redeemer. All that I am and all that I have is yours. We make that reconnection. We again, once again, are, are sitting at the feet of Jesus. We once again are like Mary grabbing hold and holding on to him. Don't leave me. Don't let me go. I just want to be there. But Jesus, as he did with Mary, says you need to get up and you need to go. And you need to tell my friends. Like the two disciples on Emmaus, as, as, as they made that connection, that's us as well, that as we're standing there, we, Jesus is entering into our world and we don't even know it. He's come up beside us on this journey and he's sharing with us the truth of God, the truth of God's love, the, the, everything that he has for us. And there are times we don't recognize it. There are times that we think, well, that's great. That's a good thing. I wonder where they got this information. I wonder where they got this, this sense of love. I wonder how they knew what I was going through. It's because Jesus is there. He knows what we're going through. And he surrounds us with people who can help us, who can walk with us, who can share with us. Because because they're listening, they're seeing God, they're being witnesses, agents, being the people of God to us, for us, with us. Opening that door to reconnect. Opening that door for us to be, once again, sitting at the feet, at the table with God, with the Son of God, allowing the Spirit to work within us. What does the resurrection mean? I think it means for us today, it means to be reconnected. Or maybe not reconnected. Maybe you, you, you haven't been connected in the first place. Maybe it's that time to see Jesus for who he is. Someone who died on the cross so that we may have forgiveness. Someone who rose from the dead so that we may know love and eternity. That we have hope. This message, these this words out of Luke, this, this week as we look at these, these two stories, I think it asks of us two things. I think it asks of us, one, to make that connection with Christ, if we have not, and that's simple, just to have a prayer, just saying, God, forgive me. Forgive me and be the Lord of my life. 
And if you have questions about that, I'll be more than happy to have a conversation with you about that. If you don't feel comfortable talking to me, um, talk to someone else in the congregation. Talk to Alan, talk to Nikki, talk to Tim, talk to Kelly, talk to someone. And if you've already made that connection and maybe you've felt disconnected lately, maybe you felt that, that God has been distant, that, that things just aren't the same, uh, please realize as, as the disciples who were walking down that Emmaus road were, were not realizing that Jesus was right beside them, they are having that trouble, that's the same for you and I. It's not that God's far away. It's that we're just not able to see him at this moment. And to make that reconnection, maybe your prayer is a little different than this. Maybe your prayer should go along the lines of, of God, I'm sorry. There's a, a disconnect here. There's, there's something that's interrupting our relationship. And, and, and God, I, I, please forgive me. Help me to see what that is. So that as I sit at the table, just like the disciples did, that as, as that bread is broken, I will realize that you're there. God, I need you to be a part of my life. To deepen that relationship. To strengthen it. So that once again, you and I are walking hand in hand. That you were side by side, that I know that you are there, and I know that you're with me. What does the resurrection mean? It means that Jesus is here now.